Bass, Arizona Diamondbacks legend, 2001 World Series hero. Please put a warm round of applause for Luis Gonzalez. got that right you know what that's from is that from uh, karaoke <laughs> yes in japan yes yeah. <laughs> 2 30 in the morning osaka Shh. oh sorry it was 12 in the afternoon yeah well in, yeah in california <laughs> yeah that's right we're walking down the street uh, my friend is out here He's, I, I saw him earlier <laughs> and we bump into luis gonzalez and he says hey let's go karaoke the little karaoke bar and he absolutely slayed La Bamba. And next thing you know, it was like he was like Michael Jackson in Japan. In a, J in a Japanese bar, that was awesome. Yeah. I don't think they understood a word we no. said, but they were... They loved it. I felt like a rock star. It was so good, so we had to bring you up. It was cool. Let's hear it. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Yeah, it's great to see you. It's yeah. good, everything's good. Life's good? Living the dream. Nice, still working for the D-backs? I am in the front office with the uh, Diamondbacks. Yeah, you guys got a good team this year? We do, uh, you know, picked up Bum Gardner, we got yeah. Starling Marte from the Pirates, and yeah. Yeah, we, we feel like we're in contention this year. I feel like when I look at your team and people don't really realize that, it's like you have these under the radar moves and they're not the big $300 million signing, but getting a guy like Madison Bumgarner, not just you know, on, his fifth, on his fifth day or his day, but the other four days and what that means to a rotation. Yeah, we do. We got some quality guys. We're hoping a guy like Madison can help a guy like Robbie Ray, who was going to be our ace, and now he's the number two guy. But uh, yeah, a guy like that with that demeanor and attitude that he has, uh, he doesn't like the Dodgers, and that's good for us. So, uh, you know, hopefully it'll fare out well for us. In the or the Giants. Or the Giants. Yeah, now. yeah, too. Yeah. He's got a lot to prove. Yeah. I like that. Um, so, also, you have a son playing minor league baseball now? I do, my in son. Big league camp. Yeah, he, well, he's he's in minor leagues with the San Francisco Giants. We don't talk when the season starts. Okay, yeah. He's, he's in the same division. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's in the grind right now, working his way up. Hopefully this year he'll play in San Jose and in, uh, in high A ball and work his way through. Nice. A lot of people here, I know there's Arizona Diamondback fans here. And, um, yeah. I, 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 yeah. Yes. Yes. Where are you at? Keep back, fans. Keep yeah. up. Yes. Before we get, I want to thank you for having me on my own field. I can't even get on my own field. And I had to come on this show to get on this field, so thank you. We, we were going to get to that, but it was a gift to us to get you finally on your own field. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. Um, if anybody doesn't see that, I don't know the 2020 and the three, this is Luis Gonzalez Field that we're actually having this show right here. It's really incredible. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I talked to uh, Ben Zobrist about this in the past, um, about the 2016 at Batty Yeah, like how, how much, like is, it a is there any chance yet? you can take everybody here on a little trip down memory lane about what you were thinking, no, pitch to pitch and everything in 2001 off Mariana Rivera with the bases loaded, and you, you lived every boy's little dream, and girls too, but you... You you had you lived the dream out of a walk off base hit for Game Seven of the World Series. That's incredible. Yeah, it was uh, it was a truly storybook season for me from start to finish. In April, I tied the home run record for home runs in a month with 13, and then as the year kept going on, I made the All Star team, was selected a starter, went to the home run derby, won the home run derby, and then we get to the World Series and. Uh, you know, we felt like we outplayed the Yankees every game. We lost a couple heartbreakers in New York City with the uh, the walk-off home runs with Jeter and then Tino Martinez hit one. And, and then we come back home for game six. We dominated that game. And then to get to game seven, in the eighth inning, I batted off of Mariano. He punched three guys out in that inning. And then as the ninth inning started coming around, we were down the run. Uh, we tied it up. And then as a player, you know, most players, you start looking at the lineup you know, up on the scoreboard and you start trying to figure out in your head because guys try to figure out scenarios where they might get that opportunity to come up and you don't want to not prepare for something like, you know, like Jimbo was saying, you want to be ready to go when you get there. And then I was starting to count, okay, if two guys get on here and another guy, and I may hit with bases loaded here. Or I may hit with second and third, maybe one or two outs. And, and lo and behold, you know, I found myself on deck with Craig Council up at the plate with second and third. 
And uh, I'll be honest with you, I was on deck. I was thinking, man, where do I want to go to be on the cover of that Wheaties box when Council gets that game on the hit? And uh, he got hit by the pitch. And then all of a sudden, it was, you know, everybody's on their feet. You know, basically. How do you control your emotions in that, in that moment like that? I didn't at the time. I was like, oh, shoot, man, here I am. Uh, you know, don't screw this up. Everybody's counting on you. But, uh, you know, as you're walking to the plate, there's so many, well, First of all, Tori went out and talked to the infield and, and to Mariano, they decided to bring the infield in. And uh, in my mind, I was just thinking, man, I played this scenario out in, you know, little league and T-ball or stick ball, whatever, wiffle ball, and this is it. I mean, this is the one shot you got. Either you do it or you don't. And then first time all year I choked up. I didn't choke up all season, and I was just, I just wanted to get some. In my dream, I hit a home run, or with my buddies in the backyard as a little kid, a home run. And in reality, I'll take the, the blooper, and for you little kids that weren't around, it was a screaming line drive in the left center field gap. So I always tell that when I go to the schools, they're like, this guy got the game-winning hit, and I tell them, yeah, it was a line drive out there, and the teachers are rolling their eyes like, yeah, we were there, we saw it. It's about where you hit it, not how That's right. You hit it. Yeah, it worked, and it was an incredible moment. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're all sports fans, and you know, we we have teammates and guys that you admire, you played against, and you want something good to happen to them. And I've always been a guy that you know, you sit on the couch and you're watching golf or football, basketball, and you go, man, I wonder what that feels like to have that ultimate moment. And I, I did. I had that moment, and I was. You didn't know. I didn't know how I was going to react when it happened. And you don't. You don't practice it. You do when you're a little kid in the backyard, but when you're, you know, 27, 28 years old, you don't go out in the front yard and your neighbors think you're nuts jumping up and down going, what the hell is that guy doing out in his front yard? But, uh, yeah, it was a really cool moment. And then that moment led to you putting roots down here in Arizona. We talked about it backstage, like how everybody treats you here, and, and, and they should. You you provided a moment to last a lifetime for so many people, and how grateful you are that how the fans treat you here. Yeah, I've been blessed. I mean, to be here in Arizona, the, the fans here are fantastic. And, you know, I always tell, like, my kids, you know, I have triplets now. They're 21 years old. I have two daughters and a son. And um, the biggest thing for me, and I always try to tell my teammates, is, you know, you treat people the way you want to be treated. And we were blessed. Like Jim said, you know, we were given a platform to be able to play a game. But so many other great players are going to come and play this game. It's the impact that we have that we can make in the community. Um, you know, all the records and everything is going to be broken and there's going to be better players, bigger and stronger and things like that. But the thing that I want to be remembered most for is what I do off the field, you know, which is help people out and, and be a part of the community. Just be a normal guy when you're out there. And I think that's what's carried well for myself and my family here in the state of Arizona. Yeah! yeah. yeah. And I got to say, other than when we competed against each other, when you treated me like you were the older brother and I was like five years younger, <laughs> Your 450 average and spray balls all over the no, field. Definitely. Other than that, I get lucky sometimes. <laughs> you get lucky a lot off me. <laughs> but I, you, you were so great to me as a young player across the field, and you don't see that all the time. And I always appreciated that. I think the world of you, and we thank you so much for joining us here at Off the Mountain. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Everybody, Arizona Diamondbacks legend, Luis Gonzalez. <laughs>